Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Parkour. In this video, I want to show how I've built a security first ORM. Uh, so if you haven't been following the channel, uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've been building a PHP app. Actually, I've been taking an old PHP app that I worked on years and years ago, five, six, seven years ago, something like that. And I'm taking it from what I would consider to be legacy status, bringing it uh, into the present and hopefully into the future as a cloud native, scalable, secure application. Uh, that's why we've been looking at uh, things like uh, Sonar Cube uh, to do static analysis and um, uh, various dynamic uh, security testing, pen testing uh, tools. Uh, if you haven't seen those videos, I'll leave links to them uh, down in the description below. Um, I recommend you check them out. Uh, you don't need to watch them in order to understand what I'm, I'm going to talk about in this video, uh, but if you're interested, they're there. And of course, please do consider subscribing to the channel so that you'll uh, see not only all of those videos, but also all the videos that I, I'll be putting out in the coming weeks uh, as I continue to dive deeper into this project. So with all that out of the way, uh, let's take a look at some code that I've written to basically turn the ORM that I was using into what I consider to be a security first ORM. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what I mean by that. So let's switch over to Visual Studio Code. Uh, and you'll see, uh, and I, I recognize that the, the font is, is pretty small. Actually, let me, let me bump that up a little bit. Um, I was going to zoom in, but I think I can I can just bump the font up here. So basically, what I did uh, is I created a predicate class uh, in PHP, um, and there's a lot of code here. I'm not going to explain exactly what's going on on every single line, uh, but all that to say, uh, what I've built is a set of utility functions. Um, as we scroll down at the bottom, basically. Uh, I created a what in, in some other languages might be considered a static class. Uh, I just call it Q because this is something we're going to be typing a lot as we use this. And basically, that contains a bunch of helper methods that just create specific predicates. So basically, what this this interface allows you to do is write a small amount of code that builds up. Uh, what is essentially an abstract syntax tree uh, behind the scenes. And then when the query gets executed, it takes that abstract syntax tree, turns it into SQL. And you can actually see, uh, let's see, that was, that was predicate. So um, predicate is right here, it creates a new predicate. And it call, when it runs the query, uh, it calls this to ANSI SQL method, uh, which basically does what you would expect. A predicate is basically a left operand, a right operand, and some operation between them, the operator. Uh, so operators might be equals, not equals, greater than, greater than or equals, right? Those sorts of things. And down here, you'll see that there's a function for equals that only takes the, the two things that might change, right? Equals as an operation is always equals. That's, that's what it is. That's how it's defined. Um, but it takes two operands. Uh, similarly, you know, you get greater than, less than, less or equal, those sorts of things. Between is special because it actually takes three operands. Um, and there's logic in the predicate wrapper class for that. And then things like is null and is not null only take one operand and the predicate class knows how to handle that as well. So these are kind of an, an abstraction uh, in interface on top of the predicate class. Um, and I, I created them for you know most of the SQL operations, uh, if not all. Um, I also uh, created some for aggregates. I guess the only aggregate I have right now is concat. Uh, this is the same thing as the SQL, the ANSI SQL concatenation function. Uh, so the main reason that I implemented some of these functions is because I actually had queries on the on the glass minnow side that used this functionality. And my, my goal is really to move away from everywhere I have a 
predicate that looks like a, a, a SQL string, uh, you know, with question marks where the uh, the parameters would go and the, the table, the field names are hard coded in the SQL. I want to move that into something that is code. Uh, and the reason for that is because I really want to be able to communicate through code what is uh, a, a piece of SQL syntax, you know, so, something like, uh, you know, the, the like operator, right? There's nothing stopping me from potentially naming a, uh, a field in SQL like or a, a, a table like, right? So it, in a string, anything that I put in there could be anything. Um, and that also potentially leaves the door open to SQL injection attacks. Uh, if you it, it don't craft your SQL correctly, uh, it really puts the, the burden on the developer to write good SQL. Uh, and as we've seen in some of the security scan results, there are some SQL injection vulnerabilities and I wanna make it as difficult as possible, ideally impossible, to write SQL injection vulnerabilities. So my goal here is basically um, that you'd actually get, uh, and I'll show uh, some of these things in a minute. Uh, let's let's go back to um, something simple like greater than. I want to make it very obvious what whether something is a piece of data or a column name. Um, so you'll actually see uh, if you pull this up. And again, all of this code is on GitHub. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. It's github.com slash bparts slash pales dash active record. Um, but I do have a concept of, you know, I'm not seeing it in this, uh, oh, here we go, parameter. I do have a concept of a parameter. And this is a very specific conscious choice that I made that in order for something to be treated as data, it has to be wrapped as a parameter. And I've built some uh, some tests around this because, you know, let's let's do good things. You know, as we're moving into the future, let's actually uh, do good best practices, follow good coding best practices. So I wrote some tests. Simple equality is where I started. Right, we can see here it's just comparing two pieces of data. Um, and those, those are, uh, safe to be hard coded actually. Um, but as we get down into some more complicated things, I actually have a helper function for adding a parameter in. So these are values that get parameterized and you can see it's comparing, it's expecting the two ANSI SQL to be, uh, and I think I actually have some of these, um, in some of the assertions I have the the um the values swapped around so i think it's supposed to be expected is first and actual is second right i think um, whereas i have the actual first and the expected second o oops um, but you can see two ansi sql on this uh sequence should be expected to be call name in question mark comma question mark um, now yes this is a lot more verbose However, I'm, I'm really trying to make it as expressive as possible. Um, and I've actually built in some, some little syntax tweaks here and there uh, to try to make it uh, as um, fluent, pun sort of intended, fluent as possible. Uh, so it, it follows the fluent interface guidelines and is uh, fairly fluid. Uh, it it kind of makes sense, it, things follow and flow one into the other uh, and, and just kind of seem reasonable from a writing code perspective. Uh, so yeah, we've got a bunch of tests here. I, I even have a few. I started adding things uh, for more advanced uh, functionality. I actually have a query uh, that kind of looks across a join essentially. Um, and I think this this query is actually pulled from from that that scenario. So obviously here, this is a snippet of SQL. This is not the full SQL query, um, but but that's the goal here. And this uh, this is in a different file because it actually needs a lot more context than than some of these simple tests 
require. So let's actually take a look at what this would look like in real code. So uh, let's, let's actually zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, you can see on the left is what was in there originally, and on the right is what it looks like with the new um, query system uh, in place. Uh, so, and you'll you'll also notice that I, I added a, a couple of helper methods to the actual model class. So, and instead of event colon colon find, there's actually event colon colon where, and then it the whole thing is ended with a call to execute. So you build up this query and then you call execute, which actually runs the thing. Uh, the reason that I went this direction was because there were several places where I would have kind of a partial query and then add another piece to the query and add another piece to the query. Uh, or I would have a piece of a query stuck in a variable and then I would be building up this larger query based on uh, some of those variables, which felt a little bit difficult to read to me, and also, of course, uh, potentially leaves the door open to SQL injection. So by doing it this way, you can actually build a query, and then you can do you can add predicates to it. So you could actually add a, a where, right? You could do event where some some base uh, predicate, and then you can actually do that query where an additional predicate, um, you know, based on whatever. So I don't know that I, that I have any examples of that here quite yet. I'm still in the process of converting some of these queries over. Uh, but you still see what it looks like. So in this this first one up at the top, um, we have order status ID, and uh, that's that's a column payment paid and payment total. Those are both, uh, all three of those are columns. And then we have data here, right? So if we move to, to the new version, we can see order status ID. That's in there. That's just a string, which indicates this is a column. We have payment paid, payment total, and then zero is just a piece of data. Um, that's safe because it's just an integer. Uh, but in some of the other examples, I think you'll see, um, actually, there are a couple of places where it really should be set as a parameter and it's not. Uh, this is actually something that I'm, I'm working on. Um, if you actually look at the, uh, the tests, you can see that um, none of these column names are escaped. Uh, and that's, that's really something that needs to happen because you'll notice over here in predicate database test, the, the table names are escaped. Um, right now, these field names here are not escaped. Also something I'm working on uh, because I really want this to be security first. That's, that's, that's non-negotiable. Um, by the time I call this done, this will be security first, and anything that you don't specify is a parameter will be treated as a uh, database name or a table name or you know something something that should be escaped, something that should be treated as a as a, as a piece of database structure as opposed to a piece of database data. Um, yeah, so going back to some of these examples, um, a lot of those are very similar. Um, but you can see, let's, let's just zoom into this, this block here. You can see we have, uh, event where then we start off with Q colon colon equals, and then we can chain things on top of that or, or, and so on and so forth. Um, and th those obviously use the like. Um, predicate. Um, so, you know, I, I'm continuing to work on this. There, there will be additions. Um, what I really want eventually to do is this, this select. I want that to be part of the, the AST or part of the, the, the query system as well. Um, that select method is particularly uh, slow. 
because it actually executes the query, pulls it back into memory, and then runs this transformation. Uh, it's basically a, a map. You know, if you're familiar with functional paradigms, it's essentially a map uh, over the data, but it's in memory. It's not it, at the database level. I really want to change that so that it, it goes against the database. So I can basically swap the order. I can do select something and then execute the query. Uh, that'll be much more performant. So um, I think that's everything that I wanted to mention for this video. Uh, there are, like I said, m uh, several changes that I, I am, I'm still planning to make to this uh, this library. Again, you can find it on GitHub, github.com slash bpark slash pales dash uh, active record. Um, and I'll leave a link to that down, down in the description below. Um, I, I want it to be security first, ideally performant, uh, though performance is not something that I'm prioritizing right now. Uh, I, I want to focus on build, continuing to build out this um, parameterization and predicate uh, style uh, syntax first, and then worry about performance. Um, again, and also, because I'm building this mainly, at least right now, primarily to support Glass Minnow, I'll continue to add functionality and improve performance as it helps the Glass Minnow project. So Glass Minnow is coming first. This is one aspect of what I'm doing to, to uh, enhance Glass Minnow. So if you like this video, go ahead and click that thumbs up button. I really appreciate that. Uh, that helps, you know, spread, spread the word about the channel, uh, spread the you know, the, the, the things that I'm doing uh, and helps other engineers, software engineers, software developers like yourselves uh, learn more about the, the world of software engineering that we work, that we work and, and live in. Um, so yeah, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos come out. And if you have thoughts on things that I can do to further improve this library or questions that you have about it, or additional topics that you'd like to see in future videos, please leave a comment down below. Uh, for everybody who has already left a comment on a video, I greatly appreciate it. Even if I haven't, uh, you know, I, I try to like comments, you know, when I see them. Uh, if I haven't liked your comment, I apologize. I really try to uh, react uh, to, to comments, either like them or reply to them, um, because I really do appreciate it. Uh, this channel is, you know, it, it wouldn't, it really wouldn't exist without all of you guys. Um, so I really appreciate you watching and interacting and engaging with the channel. Um, and if you have ideas about where you want it to go, please leave those down in the comments below and I'll be happy to do a video on, you know, whatever topic you are interested in learning more about. And with that, Thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow, probably.